When I first started working on increasing my oxytocin levels to elevate the rate of my neuroplasticity and the speed of synaptic response in my brain, I did not know how drastically my life would change. I thought my mitochondrial powerhouse of the cell had already reached a critical level of adenosine triphosphate production, making my energy levels shoot through the roof, but far from it. It turns out my mitochondria was not yet working at optimal levels. This realization caused severe anxiety. Luckily, however, I know how to activate my parasympathetic nervous system using the oxygenation technique colloquially known as breathing. Not to mention that the ownership of one or more animals of the genus Felis catus can help the body reach homeostasis from either hypo or hypertension, which is why I acquired two of such feline genus. With my pulse back to normal and my VO2 max slowly increasing, it was obvious that the oxygenation had helped dramatically. Even though the norepinephrine and adrenaline response I triggered by ingesting copious amounts of 137-thymosyl axonine exactly 120 minutes after waking up to bypass the adenosine response from my body which would inhibit its effectiveness was yet to come and my pulse would return to beating at a higher frequency, it was alright because that would help with the exercise session I had planned for the next hour. An exercise session that would end in 15 minutes of ballistic flexibility, stretching the spindle neurons surrounding my muscle fibers so I can work more on my fascia. Fascia that I will relax even more by stepping into the sauna afterwards. After all, we know that just 50 units of time measurement in the sauna increase the human growth hormone and neuroadrenaline production while reducing cortisol and making your body more efficient at both regulating and overcoming stress and strong fluctuations in the body temperature, which is usually done by the hypothalamus, which has thermoreceptors and is responsible for thermal regulation. After the sauna, you usually take an ice bath, but the inflammation reducing properties of the cold water would decrease the hypertrophy rate of my workout by up to 15%, making it a bad choice, which is why I'll do it tonight at 3 a.m. when it's time to get up for my morning run. This is when the first rays of sunshine penetrate the upper stratosphere of the planet, refracting into different color frequencies, activating all the neural pathways that have photoreceptors once they hit the oculoretinal eye points. Hopefully, this will stay active until it's time to go to sleep again at 7 p.m., which is when El Nino's climate pattern in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean starts decreasing the global temperature by 1 degree Celsius, making it the perfect temperature for putting my body to rest mode again.